In the Chen Hills of Burma, Leon Leon was sitting by a steep mountainside field, watching the last of the fires burn themselves out. During the last dry season, his family had cut the trees and brush on about two acres and allowed the vegetation to dry. Yesterday, they had ignited the field and fire had burned the brush and fallen trees, clearing the land so it could be planted in time for the coming rains. Suddenly, he saw two strangers walking along the path to his village. Why would strangers visit his village, he wondered. His village had no road accessible by jeep, and since it was built on the spur of the mountain, no one came through it. Therefore, visitors were almost unknown. Leon Leon ran to the path and followed the strangers to his village. It was reassuring that they were dressed as Chin Burmese, like himself. The two friendly young men approached the headman's house. Villagers crowded around to hear what they would say. They spoke of a new religion and asked the headman's permission to share the good news with their fellow chins in the village. It was difficult to understand them because they spoke a different chin dialect than that spoken in the village. There are about 40 dialects of chin, so a visitor from 20 miles away may speak quite differently. The headman agreed to let them speak. Fortunately, one of the villagers was a retired soldier and understood their Falam Chin dialect and interpreted for them. The two visitors were evangelists and told them of a loving God who created a good world that was not filled with evil spirits wanting to do them harm. This was a surprising revelation because everyone had always believed the world was full of spirits most of them malevolent, causing sickness, accidents, and crop failure. Since time immemorial, they had tried to propitiate these spirits with sacrifice at altars in their living sites. There were also altars at their village entrances and beside their fields. They had lived in fear of offending some spirit that would then cause them mischief, but always some spirit seemed offended and then they would have to offer sacrifices to the offended spirit, hoping he would relent. How often their sacrifices had been ignored and the problem continued. Just recently, Bani Mang, a child, had died in spite of the sacrifice of a pig. The people were poor. Families spent most of their income for feasting, drinking, competition, and sacrifices. Life was troubled and fearsome, yet these evangelists spoke of an all-powerful, loving God who had sent his Son so that everyone might know him. The Chin villagers were skeptical, but they wanted to know more. They invited the evangelists to stay longer, although some feared that the spirits in the village might be offended by talk of a new religion. The evangelists stayed and taught. The villagers listened and asked questions. The villagers finally said they would like to learn more and would welcome regular visitors to tell them about Jesus. The spirit medium, who had told the villagers what spirit had been offended and what sacrifices were needed, was not happy and almost overturned the decision. But the retired soldier who had traveled outside the village, told of seeing many Chin villages that were Christian, which had not suffered from the evil spirits. One of the elders of the village remembered an old tradition. Long ago, the Chins had a book. Once they became drunk and placed the book under the rafters and forgot it. One day, the book fell down and got wet, and as it was made of skin, the dogs ate it. Since then, they had had no book and had become drunken fools. One of the evangelists was from a small, non-Christian village. When he had accepted Christ, his family and the village had not and had driven him out of his village because they were afraid to have a non-spirit worshiper among them. 
A delegation of Christian deacons came from a Christian village six hours walk each Sunday and began teaching them the Jesus way. Some wanted to be baptized right away, but they were made to wait until they understood the new religion thoroughly. After six months, several families accepted Christ. As part of their commitment to Christ, they burned their items and altars related to spirit worshiping. They were baptized in the stream. Others preferred to wait and to see if the spirits were offended. When nothing bad happened, and they noticed how cheerful, happy, and fearless the new Christian families were, and what a nice Christian fellowship they had, more decided to join. Other changes occurred. The new Christians refused to drink and take part in the bouts where much strife and feuds had arisen. Life improved as they put their energy in wholesome activities. Because of some simple sanitary procedures the Christians introduced, fewer children died, and soon there were over 40, enough that the government would provide teachers for a primary school. Teachers worked together and built a fine school building and two houses for the two teachers the government sent. Kindergarten through fourth grade classes were started. It was extremely difficult for the children, as the instruction was in Burmese, a language they had rarely heard. Fortunately, the teacher could explain in a Chin dialect they could understand. By the fourth grade, the children knew Falan Chin and Burmese, as well as their village language of Non Chin. Starting in the fifth grade, they learned English. Leon Leon did well in school. Village elders said he was quick and had a good head. The teachers encouraged him to continue his education and attend a middle school at a nearby village. When most of the villagers were Christian, they built a fine church with a corrugated steel roof. It was the finest building in the village because the place of worship of God should be the best. When association meeting time came, several members of the new church walked two days to the meeting place. They were amazed there were so many other Christians who welcomed them as brothers and sisters in Christ. There were Mindat chins from the southern Chin Hills with their distinctive woven patterns and headdress. And Tidham chins with the women wearing shawls over their shoulders with the pattern only used by Tidhams. A good number of Hakka chins came with men wearing a blanket of the Hakka pattern draped over their shoulder. The Falam chins had the most representatives with their tufted daws or knives and the Falam pattern in the women's skirts. Leaders who knew all areas could tell where each delegate came from even before they heard their speech. While they had trouble understanding all the different dialects, they could all sing together to the glory of God and what he had done in their lives. They had fellowship in Christ in spite of language difficulties. Leon Leon had grown up, and gradually his understanding of Christ and the meaning of God in his life had deepened. The pastor arranged for a Christian family at Falam to take him so he could attend the government high school, the only one in Falam County. After six years of hard work, he passed the 10th standard, an achievement reached by less than 10% of the chins. He returned to his village to achieve his next goal. He wanted to court his childhood girlfriend, Zizeng. He arranged to work alongside her as they weeded in the fields. How pleasant it was to walk back to the village with her. The relationship developed, and finally he told his parents. His parents approved, and so his parents visited Zizeng's parents, asking for their daughter as bride for Leon Leon. The girl's parents discussed it with their relatives, and when they had approved, they asked Zizeng. Zizeng said yes, and so the matter of bride price was discussed. Normally, Leon Leon would give gifts of money, pots, cattle, and blankets to the girl's family and the five or six relatives who had a right to dowry gifts. But Zizeng's father said they would not take any dowry because they were Christian and he wanted to set an example. 
if Leon Leon and Zizang developed a long lasting love, that was all that was important. And so a wedding date was set. Mm -hmm. Leon Leon's father recalled how he had to pay 10 strands of beads, two cows, two gongs, two brass cooking pots, and two brass water pots for his wife. Ah, the younger generation has it so much easier, he said. Several weeks later, there was a large feast at the bride's house. Afterwards, the crowd went to the boy's house for an all-night party. The next morning, there was another feast at the groom's house. Then the wedding ceremony was performed at the village church. Late in the evening, finally, Leon Leon and Zizang were left alone to begin married life together. Now Leon Leon must make plans for the future. Should he go on to the university and government work? University would involve leaving the Chin Hills and going to Mandalay or Rangoon. He consulted with Zizing. They prayed together about their future. They remembered what great liberating changes had come to their village with the arrival of Christianity. They felt God calling them to carry the message to other villages as it had been carried to their village. Yes, he would become a pastor evangelist. Therefore, Leon Leon decided to study at the Zomi Theological Seminary, but the tuition and board were 1,500 jots, $60, far beyond anything he could earn. With everybody giving gifts of money, family, friends, his home church, and his association, he was able to enter. Leon Leon started four years of Zomi Theological College at Falam with 40 other students and six teachers. He learned about the Bible and he improved his English so he could use the books available in English. Suddenly, one night, Leon Leon became sick. His friends took him to the 150-bed hospital. That day, there were almost 600 inpatients, and he shared a room designed for four with eight other patients. The doctor said Leon Leon had typhoid and needed medicine, but the hospital had none. His friends scoured the market and were able to find a bottle at four times the official price. By pooling their money, they were able to purchase it. Fortunately, the medicine was not counterfeit or watered down and did its work, and Leon Leon got well and returned to his studies. While Leon Leon was studying at Zomi Theological Seminary, the Falam Baptist Church launched its great building program. Leon Leon and other students helped church members dig the trenches for the footers, carried stone, and packed it in place to make a strong foundation. They dug and cleaned clay, mixed it with water, and treaded it to the right consistency. Then they carried the plastic mud to a professional brick maker who shaped the bricks. Youth set out the bricks to dry. When 50,000 had been made, they fired them. Altogether, they made 300,000 bricks. With the help of professional masons, they built a large sanctuary, 60 feet by 120 feet, that would hold 1,500 people. Finally, the last retaining wall was finished. In the year that Leon Leon completed his four years of study, the church was completed. Over 4,000 attended the dedication service, and 7,000 gathered for the celebration feast. It was a proud moment when Leon Leon received his diploma after four years of hard work. His friends congratulated him, and he rubbed many arms with his right hand, the chin way of saying thank you. With the permission of his sponsoring association, Leon Leon and Zizang talked with the Falam Baptist Association secretary. It was decided they should work with their home association, which has 14 churches and three pastors. This would allow each church to have a pastor once a month, and on two Sundays each month, they could visit non-Christian villages. Before they returned to their association, the secretary invited them to go with him to Hakka by pickup taxi that held 27. After traveling over beautiful mountains, 
They would attend the yearly great rally of the returning CCOC ambassadors. Lian Lian and Zizeng eagerly accepted the invitation. Several of their unmarried friends